last six to seven years, it's been a constant pattern, right, of blaming everybody except for the one obvious causation of all the problems. First, it was, well, Kevin McHale, man, he's just not working out as a coach, man. His, his offense, his schemes are all outdated and archaic. You know, this isn't 1987 anymore, Kevin McHale. This, it just doesn't work in today's NBA. He's out of there. Dwight Howard, look, man, you were, you were great in your Orlando Magic days, but this is a new NBA. You know, your game doesn't right, quit, really fit in today's changing, evolving league. It's you, you're the problem. Then it became, look, Carmelo Anthony, you know, hey, man, it's ain't the same NBA anymore. You know, you're you're a mid-range guy, a mid-range master that's good, but this is a three-point shooting league, and you don't quite fit our team. You know, you're the problem. Okay? He's gone. Then what happened a couple of years later? Well, you know, the problem is Chris Paul, man. You know, I, I, we thought it was going to work. But it's Chris Paul, um, you know, he's a great player, but, you know, um, it's a lot of politics going on now with the team, and, you know, he's a distraction, and he's complaining about too many things, okay? This is James Harden's team, not Chris Paul's team. So he's gone. Russell Westbrook in there. A guy that was his teammate now in OKC, um, that didn't work. As a matter of fact, Russell Westbrook, the more he – Observed James Harden, the more he lost respect for him. Constantly, Jay, look, Russ, Russell Westbrook now, public whipping boy number one when it comes to the mainstream media. Okay. One thing we can say about Russ, yes, during the games, he may shoot air balls and he turns the ball over and all these different things within the game. But one thing you can never take away from Russell Westbrook is his professionalism. You don't hear this type of shit from about Russell Westbrook off the court, okay? Matter of fact, you would think he would be Russ, just from observation, but it's James. That's the problem. James Harden is the problem, my friend. It's him. This is why he don't sniff my top 10 shooting guards list. It's him. The best team they had in years, 2018, they completely got gutted that team to appease James Harden because he's selfish and all he wants to do is score and shoot the ball 25 to 30 times a night, yak up uh, 13 to as many as 23 points a night. That's what he wants. He wants to pour in points. He just, hey, look, now the issue is, you know, according, according to James Harden, his apologists, the few of them are still out there. It's the, it's the owner. You know, he's a Trump supporter. And that's why he wants out of there. If you believe that shit, you're a fucking fool. Isn't James Harden the same dude that wore a Blue Lives Matter gator several months ago, which obviously is a pro-police gator? And yeah, the owner may not be, the new owner may not be have been there entirety of Trump's term but he's been there long enough for a guy like James Harden to know where he stands on the president and, and, and things of that nature, okay? Um, as, as, as involved as James Harden apparently was with the day-in-day -day oper operations of the Houston Rockets to the point where they would consult him with trades, he would know something like that. So that's bullshit. The reason why he wants to be traded is because he's a petulant and poor little fucking baby. Yeah. He's a poor little baby. Yeah. My Archie Bunker voice there. You know, this is the thing there. You got this college there, the NBA there, making all types of fucking money there. And this colored here named James Horton, this guy. You know, he ain't like your hard working colors like your Sammy Davis Juniors did. You know, it's a credit to his race. This guy here, he wants to jump up at all in the strip club like a jungle bunny there. Making a big whoop to do, dancing the boogie woogie there. And then he wants to show up to practice all late there with his 
Uncle Jebediah beard all the way hanging down to his tooker stand. You know, give me the good old days when your colors came around there with the, the you know, with the coiffed up afro there and the clean cuts like Sidney Pontier there. Oh, Arch, you're such a racist. No, nah, but um, on a serious note, man, this dude, the reason why he wants to leave is because the organization um, isn't catering to him. Okay? They're not catering to him. And his incredible ego. Uh, they don't want to. They're not catering to him anymore like that. And, that, and that's that's a blow to his ego. And also, apparently, the way that Silas is running the offense is an equal opportunity offense where everybody's going to be involved. And for a guy who claims to want to be a champion, like I fucking told people a couple years ago, and they said I was a hater. You know what I'm saying? I know a selfish motherfucker when I see one. Okay? Look, it's one thing. It's a difference between being a great scorer. And it's even a different difference between, you know, wanting to be great and, and win on your own terms. Like Michael and, 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 and Kobe. You know, you know, certain other guys. They still want to be the man. I get that. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you're not even willing to cut your scoring average from 35 to 30 or 35 to 27 or 28 or 30 or whatever, if you're, if you're that selfish a player, you, you, you don't, you're not going to win a championship. Kobe Bryant himself, before he passed away, told people that that style that he's playing, and Kobe would know because Kobe did it for a couple of years. That's not going to win championship. It might put you in the Hall of Fame. But you're not going to win a championship. You're period. You're not. And as far as I'm concerned, you know what I'm saying? The reports now that uh, once again he went to a strip club, violating NBA protocol, that shows a lack of, first of all, him always being late to practices and team meetings and what already shows that he doesn't have respect for his teammates. And, and the thing is, it's like this. Let's say. Um, and I'm trying to get people to, to understand how disrespectful this is. When he's the face of the league, right? Well, not face of the league, excuse me, the face of that franchise. He's holding up everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dennis Robin may have been late to a few practices and late to a few team meetings. Um, but for the most part, he was punctual. And even if he was late, because he wasn't the team leader, they weren't really holding things up for him. I guess he played catch-up. And plus, Dennis was already uh, a two-time champion before he got to the Chicago Bulls. But with Harden being the face of that franchise, they hold everything up for him. So you're just sitting around if you're another guy waiting on him to show up. That's fucking annoying. So it's bad enough that he already has all these things, this preferential, excessive preference treatment in place for him. Then you find out that he's doing this, you know, going to a strip club, not masking up, potentially infecting his teammates and other Rockets personnel. Then you're getting into arguments with your teammates because you don't respect them. Okay, um, they weren't handpicked by you, so you don't really want to fuck have anything to do with them, even though they're, they're your fellow NBA brethren. Even though it's supposed to be a family, we keep hearing that there's an NBA family, and it's true, but this motherfucker's a piece of shit. You throw a fucking base, a, ba a basketball at someone's head because you're not getting your way, and you're trying to just throw tantrums so you can get traded? You know what? At the end of the day, I was watching Undisputed. I kind of agree with Skip. At this point, you really should just trade him, get something for it, even if it's not 100% value. But just get rid of the guy, man. You know what I'm saying? Get rid of him. And um, sometimes there's there's an old saying. And, and the old saying that I used to hear growing up is, and I'm paraphrasing because it's been a long time since I've heard it, but 
basically goes, sometimes the grass looks greener on the other side when in reality it's not. I'm, I'm butchering it. Okay, I'm butchering it really bad. It's not really exactly that, but it's basically that, like, you know, sometimes from the other side, the grass looks greener on the other other the other person's yard. But once you go over there, you find out it's not what you think it is. You know what I'm saying? And if, you, if James Harden does get traded to another organization, because what he's chasing is an easy ring. That's all he's chasing. He thinks if he goes to another organization with a plethora of talent that he's going to easily, you know, shoot his way, you know, to a championship. Everybody else doing the dirty work. And, you know, you have a superstar teammate or two and that, you know, he gets an easy ring or two and, you know, now he goes down as one of his greats. Motherfucker, you will never, ever, at least me, you will never touch my top 10, motherfucker. You're a disgrace to the NBA as far as I'm concerned. Okay? It's it, Seriously, I don't like this motherfucker. I'm letting y'all know that. I try to be objective. A lot of people accuse me of hating on motherfuckers, and I keep telling them I don't. But I let you know I'm a, I hate on somebody. I let you know I don't like Tom Brady. <laughs> you know, I let y'all know that. I don't like this motherfucker. Okay, I don't like James Harden. Y'all people, a lot of people think I don't, I don't like LeBron. I don't have a problem with LeBron James. I don't like James Harden. If you call me a James Harden hater now. Yeah, that would be an accurate description. A couple years ago, I just didn't like his game. But as a person now, observing him, I can't stand people who are in positions of authority or or positions of perceived uh, preference in society, and they treat people like shit. A good karma... For me this year would be for Russell Westbrook to have an MVP caliber season and for James Harden to play like absolute shit. Let him get traded. Let him play like shit. Be exposed for a, a guy that only can play one type of way. He's a great scorer. But he only can play one type of fucking way. And he struggles. And the media who always go on Russell Westbrook, they're going to give James Harden every fucking excuse in the book why he struggles, you know what I'm saying? But that, that'll be great karma for me. And plus, uh, I want Giannis to dunk on this motherfucker too. I right? forget about that little feud they have with each other. I want Giannis in transition to dunk on James Harden in his fucking face. I mean, like, kind of like how, kind of how, kind of how, like, um, Shaq dunked on David Robinson when David Robinson flopped back and fell on his ass. Or when Barkley, or better yet, when Chris Webber went behind the back and dunked on Charles Barkley and Barkley fell into the camera. Something like that. I want something to happen like that where Giannis dumps on his motherfucker and goes, Motherfucker! Wah! Motherfucker! You know how Giannis talk, Motherfucker! And dunk that bitch. And James Garden go, Oh! Oh! Oh, my beard! You know? Somebody steps on his beard and shit, and that bitch yank out like Mo when he's pulling Larry's hair out and shit. Yeah, that'd be some funny shit, man. But tell me what you guys think.